But I want to talk, though, about some of the other politics that came out of this, because Xi Jinping said, on the one hand, in the communique that, and I thought this was a bit of a bit of a lie here, that great power competition was not the defining feature of the age. But Xi also gave a stern warning to the U.S. about arming Taiwan, and this would seem to me the optics of that would be that Xi is almost sort of declaring that he's got the upper hand in the Pacific and in the relationship. What is the message you took away from all of that? Yeah, I was. I took away kind of what you're going towards, which is I think he was like, look, I just want to be clear. He said unification is something that we've always strived for. He made it very clear. I, I know what you in America are saying. I heard you, Joe Biden. But here's what we're doing anyway. And it may not be imminent, but this is our goal. We're going to do it and don't get in our way. And they didn't back down at all. They're, they were very clear about what their goal was. And I think that that was, the, the, none of the things that, that were said today, it was like, yes, if you wanna still have phone calls and we can talk and giggle, but we're still doing what we're gonna do and we don't really care. That's the difference. There was no sense of China saying, okay, we got the message. We sent a spy plane over you. We've been provocative in the South China Sea. We get it, we've gone too far. We wanna reset relationships. The, the dialogue today was very much like, hey, if you want to still talk, we're cool with talking, but we have an agenda and we're going to execute that agenda and we really don't care what you have to say. The end of the day, they sat there and said, your only deliverable is that we have a phone call and that we're going to talk about climate change. Do you think that, I mean, here's the problem. The U.S. continues to negotiate with China as if they think that China cares. China doesn't care about climate change. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. They know what they're doing causes damage to the environment. They know what they're doing undermines human rights. They don't care. It's not like they went, oh my God, you know what, Joe, you're right. All these factories are actually doing damage to the environment. The way that we're treating people, you're right. It is kind of bad and nasty and inhumane, but I'm just glad you finally told me this because I just didn't know it until you shared that with me. And I was also, Sean, absolutely, I mean, amazed, I guess, what else were they going to do, that they had APEC in San Francisco, which, of course, as we know, is an open-air museum of dysfunctional oh. left-wing progressive politics. But what did you make of the incredible cleanup effort where they, I don't know how they got those streets cleaned up and bleached and sanitized, and they put up basically cages to keep people walking in the right areas? It was almost, you know, like... Like a, it, it, like a sort of a Chinese totalitarian effort there to get uh, all of this done. What did you make of the way Gavin Newsom just said, yeah, look, the place was a dump, we cleaned it up, and I guess next week it's going to go back to being a dump again? You know, I think a lot of folks in Australia will relate to this, but sometimes you go down to the beach and you draw something in the sand and you build a sandcastle. And then the tide comes in and it washes it all away. That's literally what's gonna happen. They built something up, they made something pretty, the tide will come in, wash it all away, and it'll be back to how it's always been. But that's what they did. What a waste of money. It was, an, I mean, I cannot believe of all the places in the US that you could have showcased. You chose San Francisco. It is, it smells gross. The people, I mean, like, if, if anyone who's been there recently, it's a disaster what that city has become. And so, What's an even bigger disaster? A, they pushed everyone out to like a periphery where no one could see. So all you had to do was like go over one. It was actually, the funny thing is, it was very much like China. I've been, when I served in the Bush administration, I traveled over there a few times. They would clean up stuff within the bounds that everybody would operate in. But if you ever asked anyone outside the boundaries, they would tell you it's still as bad as it was, you know, the day before. They just pushed it out for a day or two. By next week, it's gonna all look the same again. What a waste of money. And it was actually, I think, a disservice. It was pretty much the Chinese seeing how we do what they do. We come in, we clean up a city, we make it look nice while everybody's there, and then it goes back to the way it was the second that the cameras are gone. Such a depressing commentary on the state of America under Joe Biden. Sean Spicer, check out the Sean Spicer Show podcast. Thank you so much for joining us on the U.S. Report. As always, James, thanks for having me.